Hi everyone, welcome to this video. In this video, we will be covering EC2 user data. So we'll be seeing what user data is, what is its purpose, how we can configure the user data, and there are different types of input that we, that we can give to user data. So we'll be covering all these things in this video. So let's start this video. So the first thing that comes to mind is that what EC2 user data is and what is its purpose. So basically when we create some EC2 instances, those are vanilla instances. We don't have any software installed on those or any configuration installed on them. But there are many scenarios where we want our instances when they are launched to have certain configurations or certain softwares to be installed by default. So in order to fulfill this requirement, AWS provide us a field called user data where we can give our input and once the instance is launched, you will be having all those software installed, all those configuration will be done. So this is just to save some time because once the EC2 instance is up and then you will log into the instance and do all this configuration. It is just to do all the repeated things as soon as the instance is launched. And this is a very helpful uh, functionality, I would say. So it is mainly used to perform common automated configuration tasks or it can run scripts after the instance starts. So it can do all these things. So there are two types of user data that you can give input. One is the shell script. So you can add your shell script as a input to the user data. And once the instance is created, your shell script will configure what it is planned to do. Next is cloud init directives. So this is also doing the same purpose, but the syntax is a little bit different. So we'll see all these things in coming slide. So by default, when you run user data scripts or cloud init directives, they only run at the boot cycle. So that means when you are launching the instances first time, those scripts will be ran. But you can update your configuration to ensure that user data scripts and cloud init directives run every time when you restart your instances so by default these scripts or user data runs only at the bootstrapping but you can do some additional configuration and with those configuration you can make your scripts run at every restart so the shell scripts entered as user data are run as a root user so you do not need to add any sudo or something because by default those run as root user so when you Place the user data, those scripts are copied at this location. And once the scripts are running, you can check the log if something is failing or something is not working or the output is not as expected. You can check the log set, var log, and this folder will give you the logs. So in this use case, we'll be installing a LAMP stack. So here we will be installing Apache Web Server with PHP and MariaDB. So we'll be hosting a static website. So some softwares will be installed, PHP, MariaDB will be installed, HTTPD service is started. So and the by default user that is EC2 user is added to the Apache group. So all these things will be done via the shell script. And there are certain prerequisites that is you need to have a public IP associated with the instance. Your security group should allow port 22 so that you can connect to it and you should use Amazon Linux 2 EMI. This is specifically for this use case. So next is the script. So I'll I'll not go through this script. I'll use it in a demo. But just to show it is install uh, installing the softwares here. It is starting the services. It is adding the user. And finally it is outputting the PHP info to the page. So we'll be seeing how it will work. Next is cloud init. So cloud init is also doing the somewhat similar purpose. So it, it also configure the instance when it is launched and it is majorly or most notably used to configure the authorized keys for your EC2 instances so that you can log in with your private keys. By default, EC2 user does not, does not have any, any, any password, but you can add it. These are also used mainly for instance setting that if you want to do some specific settings to your instance or create some ad additional users then you can use cloud init for this purpose and the syntax is that the in the top you will have cloud config at the starting so i'll just show you so this is a cloud init script or the code 
so here you can see we are trying to create a new user and will assign the uh, keys as well to it public keys will add public keys related to that user so here the syntax is that it will start with this thing so this is cloud init script so in the demo we will be creating two different ec2 instances and we'll be adding configuration one for shell script and other for cloud init So now let's go to the AWS console and start creating the resources and in between if you like this content then please do subscribe this channel and like the video as that will definitely encourage me in making more such videos. Thank you. So this is my AWS console and currently I am in the EC2 dashboard. From here I will be creating two different instances. One is for my shell script and other is for cloud init. So let's create first for shell script. So I'll name it my my session shell let's say. So I'll be using Linux 2 AMI from here. Okay. I'll use my key pair and I'll be creating this in my public subnet. I have one custom VPC so I'll use that. I'll create in this my public subnet and I'll assign the public IP as well. Security group it's, it's allowing port 22 but since we will be accessing via some HTTP so I'll add one more port that is HTTP port here. Now coming to the main part if you go to advanced details here and if you scroll down to the bottom here you can see you have a field called user data. So what I'll do I'll give my shell script as an input so that it can run when the instance is getting bootstrapped. So this is my shell script and I'll just go ahead and launch this instance. So currently it is in pending state and in between I will create one more instance for cloud init thing. Nice. I'll use uh, Linux 2 AMI but I think for this use case you can choose any other but the thing is that your script and code should be tested. So I'll select my key pair. I'll again change the network settings. So in this case because we are creating a new user so like we do not need to add HTTP port so we can keep it as it is and I'll just go to advanced details to the bottom. So I've added my cloud init script. So here I'm creating a new user called test user and I'm adding the keys as well. So let's go ahead and launch this thing. Okay. So my shell script one instance is up and running so I'll just try to access the URL I'll just copy the DNS complete URL so let's see if it is working see now you are able to get the output you are getting all the PHP related information from this page so this is what it is planned to do so that means our instance is successfully bootstrapped and if I just go ahead and connect to it So here you can see logs created. I can just check all the logs from here itself. Okay, 
and next thing you can verify is the script so where is the script being copied so if you just go to So here you can see this user data. So this is the script that we sent as input. So the script is also available here. So you, you can check that. Now coming to my pre other instance that is for the cloud in it. So let's see if it is up and running. Yeah, so it is up and running now. So I'll just, because we have created a new test user. So I'll just try to connect to it via the test user so i've taken the public ip and okay so i am connected to my instance using the test user which I have created as a part of cloud init derivatives. So when my instance is up and running, I have my this user already created. And one last thing for this session is that, so in suppose you want to change or modify the user script. So you need to first stop the instance, but I'll just show you, you can change from instance setting and edit user data. Right now it is grayed out because the instance is right now running so but just for demonstration i'll just stop this instance so it is stopping and once the instance is stopped that then, then you can go ahead and change the user data if you want so my instance is stopped as of now so i just go to actions instance settings then edit user data now you are getting an option to edit this thing so you can change this and save it so so that's all for this video thank you so thanks for watching this video if you like this content then please do like share and subscribe this channel and if you want me to make some video on any particular topic then please do mention that in the comment section i'll definitely make a video for that